Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a Robert Oster ink. It is Australian Opal Grey. Here it is in the standard 50ml Robert Oster bottle. Um, really great bottles, uh, environmentally friendly and uh, sturdy and you know, you can get right down to the bottom. So good bottles. Uh, this is a really interesting ink, it's a relatively new one. Uh, there have been a few Australian opal colours recently. Australian opal blue was just before this one. And uh, this is the grey. So let's look at it on some uh, cardstock to start with. Here it is on the regular cardstock that I use. Um, you can see it's a nice sort of rich grey in the darker shading and has some nice sort of lighter bits that sort of come through there. And uh, for the sake of the exercise, here it is on the new Robert Oster large sort of swatch uh, card. Uh, you can really see some of that shading there, and you can see some of the hints of the purple and green that I'm going to talk about uh, shortly. Okay, let's look at it on radio because that's where we have it. So, here it is. Now I have this in two pens, the two standard ink reviewing pens that I use, which are Twisby Goes, uh, nibs that we're all sort of quite familiar with. Uh, and yeah, good. So uh, I have it in a extra fine and in a broad. Now uh, this ink is uh, lovely, has lovely sort of shading as you can sort of see from a lot of that sort of there, uh, really vibrant sort of light greys, uh, vibrant grey, you know what I mean, um, and some lovely dark richer grey. Uh, it's a true grey, when it, particularly when it goes on, but as it dries you'll see that it actually sort of gets these hints of sort of greens and purples and stuff. Now in the finer nib, the saturation is of course softer, but the colour still remains true. Now you can see there in this sort of section here, a good sort of comparison of the two. Let's look at it on some other paper. So first we'll start at the very, uh, actually no, before we do that, let's look at the chromatography, because this is interesting. So here's the chromatography for this ink. You can see a lovely dark grey line at the base, and then as it moves up, lighter greys, and so those pinky purples, green and then a lovely shade of blue at the top uh, it's a really beautiful chromatography and uh, actually when you see this in particular on paper like Tomo River you'll see uh, exactly a lot of that sort of coloration coming through and let's look at it on Tomo River here so here it is it's on some Tomo River paper nice beautiful shading just look at how rich that sort of darker gray is here and then right through that lighter uh, gray and then if we look at the swab you can see this purples and greens and greys and sort of almost bluey browny sort of colours as well coming through. It's really unique. Um, it's really beautiful. Now you don't see that depth of colour in the writing as you can see. You see mostly grey. Uh, it's Australian opal grey after all. Uh, but you do see hints, particularly of that sort of purpley grey. Oh, as you can see on this paper, which is sort of more ink resistant, uh, you know, you sort of get a nice sort of sort of slower dry time and it performs really really well nothing comes through there's no bleeding or feathering and the color looks great as we move down the chain well we have it here on rhodia and as you can see on the back of this rhodia paper nothing comes through there either a little bit uh, where i dropped a big blob but not really and as you can see there's no uh there's no feathering or anything like that it's it's really quite a well-behaved ink. Moving down, uh, here on the regular copy paper we start to see some feathering. Uh, as to be expected, it is a relatively wet ink I would say, uh, not super wet, and these aren't super super wet nibs, um, but there is feathering there, and of course there's a little bit of bleed on this paper. Now lower end again, this is the student notepad, a bit more feathering, it really soaks into the paper, so there's less shading, there's a little bit there. It is a very high shading ink, really, um, and then more bleed through on the back. So it's not the most, it's not the best performing ink, and in fact, if we even look at it here on the rodeo, I did say there was no feathering, but there is the occasional little bit of sort of spread uh, on the ink, uh, and that's because it is quite wet. Um, so. What we're going to do is, let's do the water test and we'll talk through some of the scoring. So I'll drop some water on there. Good. Okay. Let's talk through some of this. So shading is excellent, as I said. Sheen, well, there's none. It's not a sheening ink. Um, really, it's it's a pretty muted sort of matte colour. Shimmer, none. Saturation is fair. In the wetter, broader nibs, it's great. In the softer, in the finer nibs, it's a little bit softer. 
Wetness and flow is good. Bleed is good, as I said, on lower end, yes, we get some. Feather, yeah, there's a little bit, but not so bad. Dry time is excellent. This is 10 to 15 seconds, uh, 15 to 20 seconds, sorry, on Rhodia. Uh, and it was really just where like the ink really pulled that we got a little extra there. Cleaning is really good, really good. Um, water, let's have a look. So that, that's been on there a little bit of a while now. So let's uh, dab it up and see what happens. So there's a little bit left behind. Like you can see some blues and greens and stuff on the paper towel there, as was you know visible here in the chromatography. Um, but we do get, you know, enough left. I would say this has low water res well, slight bit of water resistance. Um, and I certainly would say, let's say that the water is uh, fair because if you got this wet, if you clean it up quick enough, I think you'd be able to say that you'd be able to save most of your writing with this ink. Value is good. Now these 50 mil bottles retail for around around 20, 17 to 20 dollars depending on your currency and where you get it from. This ink isn't widely available yet. Um, I'm assuming it'll be picked up by a few other major retailers, but at the moment uh, the availability is limited. So um, look around and check with your local retailers if they are going to stock this particular ink. So let's do the scoring and then we'll look at a couple of these colors in comparison. So overall, I say this is a th out of, using these criteria, this is a three out of five. It's got a fair performance. There's a little bit of feathering, a little bit of bleed on some paper. Um, there's a low X factor. There's no sheen or shimmer or anything like that. Um, but it isn't problematic. It cleans well, it's reliable. It is pretty, pretty good. Personal taste, now this is sort of my personal interest in the ink. I give it a 4.5. This performs really well. I love this color. I'm a big gray fan, uh, so I do like this. And in a wet nib, it is just a glorious ink to write with. Even in this broad uh, Twisby Go, you can see that uh, you know the line it's laying down is just beautiful and the shading is absolutely glorious. So what does it compare to? Well, I put it between two well-known grays, Mont Blanc Oyster Gray and Lexington Gray from Noodlers. So you can see it's fairly much in the middle there. It's not quite as green as Oyster Gray, uh, but it's not certainly not as light as Lexington Gray. It's got some nice depth to it, sort of as you can see in those samples. So this was Robert Oster's Australian Opal Gray, uh, a relatively new ink, <clears throat> and uh, I think a really nice one. Uh, and you know, if you're into greys, might be something you want to check out. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email, which is all listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, let me know if there's a way you'd like to support the channel, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your inks, enjoy your writing, and I'll talk to you soon.